Good afternoon. I'm going to do a little fluorescent pennant from here. We're using our basic fluorescent water wash uh, inspection booth here at the college. Uh, basically, we're using, don't know if you can see it down there on the ground, but we're using ZL67 water washable penetrant. Okay, uh, water washable fluorescent that is. Just give you a little quick view of our booth here. Just basic little booth with a spray tank right here. Got our water. Okay, have our uh, just basic fluorescent ZL67 penetrant. We'll apply our penetrant right here. We'll dwell, rinse in the same booth here, same station, dry, develop, and then we will get over here towards the black light. Okay? Our inspection booth. So, going to make our way through there. Going to dwip where the... Dwip. Jeez. Can talk today. Goodness. We're going to apply the penetrant there on the left. Make our way to the second station. We're going to dwell. Then we're going to rinse. Right in front of you there is a dryer. And then we get over here to the, our developing station. And then clear over there on the right is our fluorescent, uh, fluorescent black light. So, anyway. Basic process of liquid penetrant. Just showing us that we can take our part from something simple here. To where we're just going to apply the penetrant, get it all the way over here on the right, on the black light over here, where we can see what's going on and look at in the dark room or in the dark light, okay, ambient light, I guess, get us down to something visible or at least usable according to ASTM 1417 and a couple other standards that you possibly are going to use in your in your uh, place of business. So, a couple things just just to get us started here first. I'm just going to do the real quick process through in the daylight here in the white light so you can at least see what I'm doing. Then I will do the process again with the hood down so you can see what it's like being in the dark room here. So, this is the part I want to test. As you can see, it's already got a little bit of fluorescence on it, fluorescent penetrant on it. So, first things first, I want to pre clean that. Okay, many different ways of pre cleaning it, and I'm going to pretend for right now that I've already pre-cleaned it and then when I go back and do it again a second time I will pre-clean it. So, <clears throat> yep, I've already pre-cleaned it, it looks good, looks great, and really all I care about anyways is this part over here past my hands. So, I'm just going to apply my penetrant, just spraying it on, okay, it's been pre-cleaned, alright, I would set my part over here, okay, there it is, I've, I've dipped my part or brushed it on or sprayed it on or however you want to say, it doesn't really make me any difference. Oh, okay, great. I've got my dwell time specified by whatever company you're working for. For us, we're using 1417, and it generally says 10 minutes is acceptable. So, keep our coarse water droplets here for fluorescent water wash. We keep our coarse water droplets back about 12 inches. We just spray our penetrant off here. Okay, try and get as much off as we can. Try and get as much out of the center as we can without getting too close. We don't really want to be down inside of here like this or down here like this, or spraying directly on the part like that. It's not that great, okay? So staying back about 12 inches, that's all good, that's all well. Okay, got our part clean enough here. I turned the dryer off. It was up to temperature already, but I turned it off so you could hear me talking. Okay, place my part in the dryer just long enough to dry. I'm going to dry my hands while we're standing here waiting. You can see the part in the dryer. <clears throat> While that thing's in the dryer there, I picked up some regular old developer here. I'm just using Ardrox NQ1 uh, non-aqueous developer. So that thing's in the dryer there. We're waiting. I'm going to kind of move us over to the right a little bit so we can see what's going on. <clears throat> All right, this thing's drying here. I know I'm really not supposed to move it around a lot, but I'm just trying to speed up the process. Got it in the dryer here. My dryer has already been heated up. It's less than 160. Our dryer here is only about 140, which is which is perfectly fine. And if you look over here, you can see kind of in the black light, I've got a little penetrant messing around with me here. So I'm going to have to read through that, knowing that I've already got fluorescence there, in the fact that it's going to provide some some kind of indication that I may not be too happy with. Okay, so I pull my part out. Looks dry to me. Like I said, I'm really only looking at this end down here. So. Take up my developer here, light coats, okay, got kind of a white contrasting background which is what we want, 
Now, if we were to have any indications, they would shine for us. Okay, let's see if we can get in close enough to look at that. No, we're not that close yet, so let me move you down here so you can see what I'm talking about. Get you close enough in here. And it is hard to see on the camera. See if we can get it. Perfect. Okay, looking around the rest of it here. I see a couple of spots. There's another crack. There's the one we looked at first. Okay? Just simple, little, quick. I know I didn't do my 10 minute dwell for my penetrant or my 10 minute dwell for my developer, but we pretended here just for just for quick study. Now I'm going to turn the lights off, get in here where we can actually see something. <clears throat> turn us over this direction, get this hood pulled down. Now it's going to be dark in here, or a little bit darker. We're going to run this same part over again, except this time in the dark room. Okay, at least where we can see something here. So as you can see, I've got a little bit of penetrant everywhere. I'm just rinsing this off with water. Okay, I'm going to turn this dryer off. So you can hear me talking. Just turn this dryer off. Okay. I'm gonna run the same part along with a tan panel. Okay, so turn that dryer back on just for a quick second, then I'll go pre-clean it. Let me get the tan panel I want to use. I'm just cleaning up penetrant here so it's not everywhere because it tends to be a little messy. So simple fluorescent penetrant, not a difficult process. There are several steps to it, but it's nothing too terribly difficult. So let me dry my hands off one more time. Okay, back now, got my tan panel here. And then I also have this part that's in the dryer still. I'm going to solvent clean both of those. Okay, I'm just using 9PR50 here from Ardrox, just a cleaner, good pre-cleaner. So, grab my part, grab my tan panel here. I've got it right there. I'm just going to spray it down with solvent. Okay. Then let that solvent flash off. Now, granted, you want to do this where there is a lot of vented air so you don't wind up getting high. So I'm just spraying that off. I'm going to clean those off with solvent there. Give them a couple seconds to flash off. And then, again, I'm just being ready. So as I'm ready here, kind of talking a little bit about quality checks for, for fluorescent penetrant. If you can get in close enough there, you can see I've got a gauge. Okay, while well, that solvent's flashing off. Looking at my gauge right here, this is telling me my water temperature. Okay, water temperature per 1444, sorry, that's mag, 1417 for penetrant, that sounds a little better, for the ASD from X says 50 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm running right on the ragged edge of 100 degrees, so I'm going to cool that down a little bit, run a little water through it here, try and bring that temperature down. There we go, now we're coming down under 100, so I'm less than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, and if we can get up here high enough, I'll show you that what I've got going up here is actually out of allowable limit. Let me point you up here higher. Get you kind of straightened back out there. Okay, again, if we can get in there close enough, squeeze you in a little bit more here. There you're looking at my temperature gauge. We get up here a little higher. There's my water pressure gauge. 1417 says less than 40 PSI. So already, if you're looking, I'm up above about 40. I'm up to about 42 PSI. So that tells me my system's out of calibration. I've got my water pressure just a little high. Which, for us, we're going to say, all right, it's out of calibration. But for now, just for the video, we'll say, okay, it's good enough. Okay, understanding that it needs to be less than 40 PSI. And it just so happens we got a little extra pressure in our water today because that's the first time it's ever been out of calibration. And it just so happens it's when I'm making the video. So, it's one of those things. 
when it rains, it pours. So, got my parts here. Solvent splashed off my parts. Same thing, solvent splashed off. I'm just going to apply my fluorescent penetrant to both of those. I'm going to set that right there for now. Okay, I'm just using the spray method, which is fine. Okay, so here's my part part. We're going to let it sit here and dwell. Again, we're dwelling for our 10 minutes. Okay, and again, that's dependent on your company. So, apply my penetrant here. I'm just spraying penetrant everywhere. I don't really care right now that it's getting messy. A lot of people wear gloves. I don't have gloves on. It's not going to kill us. Okay? So, rinse my hand off here. All right. Through the magic of television. Of course, I'm not good enough to do all the YouTubes. And I can do the YouTubes. I just can't do time lapsing and all that stuff yet. That's, uh, that's where I'm headed with my next series of videos. So, it's been 10 minute dwell. Again, there we go. We're just rinsing this water off, rinsing this penetrant off using our coarse water droplets. Less than 40 psi, which we're actually getting close to less than 40 psi. So if I ran this thing a little bit longer, it probably would come down less than 40. And I've got a little penetrant everywhere, making a mess. I'm trying to keep that as clean as possible. Grab my next part here. Rinse it off, less than 40 psi, 50 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Try not to get too far, too close here. Depending on which book you read, it says anywhere from 6 to 24 inches. Okay, good rule of thumb is about 12. Distance away from the part. Try and keep this a little bit clean. Not always does that happen though. Now, I sprayed water on my dwell station here, so I know that since I sprayed water on my dwell station, that if I were to put another part on there to actually dwell, I would have some issues. Okay? So I don't want that. All right, so now we're in our dryer here. We're drying for our just long enough to be dry. There you can see the bottom of that part. I'm dry my hands off again one last time. Okay, so we're so we'll leave that in there just long enough to dry, get you a little closer over here to the dwell station for our developer and our black light here. So, getting ready to pull this thing out of the dryer. Okay, hoping that it's dry. I don't feel any water on there. Okay, got my Ardrox developer here. Different companies use different developers. Okay, nice even coats. Hopefully the thinner the better. Get over here to our black light and we can see already that we've got a lot more indications than we had before. Okay, if we get in here a little bit closer. Actually look down through here. Let's get over underneath there. There we go, right there. Whole bunch of indications on that guy. Okay? So I'm going to set you down here again. There's our part one last time. Grab my tan panel here. Here he is, right here. Okay, there's my tan panel. Again, I'm just spraying just real quick demos here. I understand that I'm not actually following perfect guidelines. We're just trying to get basic concepts. So, got my 10 minute developer dwell. Get you pointed down here a little bit so I can see what's going on. 10 minute developer dwell says, all right, on my TAM panel I can see one, two, three stars. Not necessarily good, not necessarily bad. We're just gonna say it is what it is for right now. On my right hand side, that's the rough side of the TAM panel, which after you go through the books and stuff, you'll see, yeah, the TAM panel has a nice clean side and a nice rough side, I guess, to show us Sensitivity on one side, sorry, not sensitivity, system performance, get those two words mixed up. System performance on this side, and then washability on this side. This means I didn't overwash, is what it's telling me. If that part were perfectly clean, there were no fluorescence on that side at all, or there was no fluorescence on that side at all, that would say, hey, you've gone too far, you've overwashed too much, and now you've actually done harm to the system. Okay? Get in here a little bit closer where we can see them again. Here's my part back here. 
okay? Shining them right at you, all these indications, okay? Now, since I'm rolling this on its edge, I'm picking up indications, which I know is not the proper thing to do. And then I'm looking at my tan panel here. Let me back up just a little bit. I have my nice, clean violet background. Just a couple indications on it because I was real quick system check. Okay, got my fluorescent water washability over here. And then I've got my three stars for system verification. Okay, simple enough. The only thing we really didn't look at in here would be actual sensitivity of the method, how to do that. And we're not really concerned with that yet. I know it's very, very important, but for now, basic overall process is kind of where we're headed to show simple ways to make this happen. And by the way, my water pressure did come down to less than 40, so that worked out well. Anyways, any questions, feel free to ask them to me, and I'll do what I can to help you. Thank you.